welcome to Reach That Page Money Talks, the show where we bring you news and reviews about money and the financial markets. I am your host, Axel Rose, and this will be our topic for today's video. Good morning. Today is Friday, April 28th. The time right now in Kuala Lumpur is 11.02 in the morning. And overnight, we have quite a big move on, on Wall Street. Last night, we have the release of the first quarter GDP for the United States. Market was expecting a release of 2%. Now, when you compare that to the third quarter of last year was 3.2%. And Q4 last year was 2.6%. And the market was expecting 2%. So we are expecting a decreasing uh, economic activity over the last three quarters. But what was released was a shocker. Okay, it came out at 1.1%, so it's about half of what the market was expecting, and that caused a lot of volatility in the marketplace. And on top of that, we have the release of the PCE, which is the personal consumption expenditure number. Uh, the core number came in, uh, market was expecting something like 4.7, it came in 4.9, so we can see that it's an increased inflation, decreased uh, uh, economic activity. So what we are technically looking at is a potential deflation. So deflation, I always mention, maintain, has been uh, a lot more problematic than a simple recession because we have lower economic growth but persistently high prices. So if you are, if the U.S. is caught in a deflation, it is going to be very difficult for you to get out of a deflationary cycle. But the market took it very differently. Market, all they see is that, okay, last month we have a banking crisis caused largely by very high interest rates, okay? So now, with the latest GDP numbers for the first quarter of this year, it shows that economic activity has slowed down. And if you continue at this pace, very soon the U.S. economy is going to go into a recession. So they say, okay, you have broken the banking system. Now it looks like the, the real economy is also hurting because of high interest rates. Maybe the Federal Reserve, when they meet next week, which is going to be scheduled on May the 2nd and the 3rd, uh, before last night, the market was expecting maybe the Federal Reserve will high interest rate by a quarter basis point, maybe you say that uh, uh, 0 0.25, uh, but now they look at this number and say, oh, maybe the Federal Reserve may not have the room to further high interest rates. Maybe they would pause, and some even speculate that Federal Reserve may actually do the unthinkable, which is to cut interest rates. And that being that, reasoning causes equity prices to zoom overnight, okay? So basically, overnight, we have a massive run up in equity prices that cause all three major in, uh, indices uh, to rally, okay? Now, it seems that the momentum behind last night's rally may continue into at least in the early part of tonight's trading, and then we'll see what how it grows by the end of the session in New York by tomorrow morning, our time here. So over in the uh, Dow Jones, you can see the market actually went uh, to a slow at 3,235, uh, 3, okay, 33,235, sorry. Okay, to a high of 33,834.5 overnight. So you can see there was a massive run up at about uh, 300 points in one single night. So that is a big move, okay? So will the momentum that we see overnight uh, continue to extend higher? I would think so, because technically the momentum behind it looks very, very strong. So there's a very likelihood tonight we will see at least in the first half an extension of this run, whether it can maintain it, and it's another story. The first barrier to higher prices will be 34,406 in my opinion, and whether it has enough momentum to go up beyond 34,712, I do not think so, but again, we will have to see. Okay, over in the S&P 500, we also saw similar move uh, from a low of 4,049 to a high of 4,138. So you can see that it's a big move, less than 100 points, but it's still a very large move. Now the price is just at the edge of this zone, which I have previously mentioned is going to be an area vulnerable to selling interest. The area is 4,140 to 4,194. Okay, we will see whether there's going to be any reaction this time. Like the first time the market went up to 4,169, it has a, a sell-off of more than 120 points from there. But again, this time we are not so sure because the momentum behind it is pretty strong. And uh, if it can break above 4,169, of course, 4,195 will look a little bit vulnerable. Uh, it may be exceeded. Again, we want to see how it reacts. If the market punched through this level but could not sustain and close back down, that will be a classical reversal signal. We will have to watch, okay? In NASDAQ, 
I think this market is getting ready to fly, okay? Because we can see uh, just last week on Wednesday, we can see market actually attempt to, uh, to take out the, uh, the year high at 13,204, fail. This time, last night market tries again, and I think this time it will be third time lucky. It is probably uh, able to break above 13,204 this time. How high it will go? Let's see, okay? Uh, this is the last August high at 13,720. So this will be a reference point. If the market goes beyond this level, the next area, I think the market may actually hit a brick wall. It's going to be 14,135 to 14,710. Okay, so this area is going to be very, very interesting. We'll see what happened there, okay? Over in Asia, we can see that because of the strong showing on Wall Street, Nikkei has actually went higher. Now, basically going into this week's training, I actually went short on Tuesday, okay, as the market goes up into the marginal high for the year, 28,806, and come back down with a, with a reversal signal. I went short here, and uh, I have since placed my uh, stop loss to break even price. So this morning, as the market zoom higher, I will stop out of my entry. So now I have no position in the Nikkei. We will see what happens next, okay? I would love to sell back if the market allows me, okay? So right now, we will see whether the 28,806 is going to be able to stop this rally, okay? Over in the Hang Seng, uh, we can see that the price in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index, actually has also a reaction to the upside, but it looks like uh, like two hours, one and a half hours into the morning trading, it seems that it doesn't seem to be able to hold. Okay, so this is problematic. Now remember, Hang Seng went up to a high of 20,864.7 uh, two weeks ago on the back of uh, higher than expected GDP numbers for Q1 of uh, 2023. On top of that, they have very strong, robust retail sales in China, and that was the peak. Since then, their market did not follow through. In fact, it has actually gone the other way, down to below 20,000 to trade to as low as 19,520. Now, this reaction rally that we saw overnight uh, this morning uh, somehow does not make it right. Okay, If the market has uh, at a high of 20,864 is based on uh, a superior uh, GDP uh, release for Q1 on top of uh, re robust retail sales, theoretically, it should continue uh, higher. Okay, uh, But the Hang Seng did not do that. In fact, it has, it has dropped uh, more than a thousand points below, okay? And now we have uh, a somewhat uh, follow through buying from uh, from New York itself. It does not cause the Hang Seng to surge. In fact, right now we are trading at the lower end of this morning's trading range. So this is, again, has bearish implications. So that means we will have to see, prepare, okay, for the possibility of lower prices in the Hang Seng. The same thing is going to be also possible in the main mainland equity index is the CSI 300. Again, the 4,169 was on the back of uh, better than expected Q1 GDP numbers on the retail sales in China. And since it's all one way street, which is down, okay? From 4,169, you went up to a low of 3,925. So you can see this is a quite a big drop here on the back of very, very positive economic news. So this can be good. And of course, this morning we have a bit of a rally uh, piggybacking on the uh, strong momentum closing on Wall Street. So let's see whether it can sustain. We are in the early part of trading. So uh, let's see in the second half whether it can maintain this momentum. Over in energy prices, we see crude oil basically now is uh, basically standing treading water. Okay, The high of $83.49 has come down all the way to $74 overnight. Uh, this compared to Wednesday low is marginally lower, but uh, there is no sign the market is about to find a bottom. So we will have to see. So if uh, the reason for the equity prices to rally is because of a visible contraction in U.S. economic activity represented by the Q1 GDP number released yesterday night. Uh, that would have global implication because if the U.S. economy slows down, now that's important because the U.S. is by far the largest economy in the world. If the U.S. economy slows down, and then the rest of the world may actually follow suit. And if we have that, then we have a global recession. And if that's the case, demand for energy products will be curtailed. There will be less demand for energy prices. Thus, uh, is also going to be translated to lower energy prices for crude oil. So whether or not we have found a bottom in the crude oil for the time being is remains to be seen, but there is no evidence that it has. So we will have to prepare for the possibility if there's going to be a rebound, this is possibly a sell rather than a buy. Okay, do watch out for that. And over in the gold market, we can see gold 
uh, it's not really reacting very, very much. Okay, uh, on on Wednesday we have a surge, uh, not a, a, a spike. Okay, to two thousand and nine dollars and forty cents, which is within this bracket of prices. Where I think it's going to be vulnerable to selling pressure. Uh, that area is two thousand and nine dollars to two thousand and fifteen dollars, and true enough, market went up to a high of two thousand and nine dollars and forty one cents, and has been going down since. Now it has not broken out of its recent range between two thousand and nine, uh, sorry, two thousand and twelve to two one thousand nine sixty nine and. 30 so basically it is trading between these two extreme prices so the market needs to break up to the upside or break down to the, to the downside to give us a new direction nearby support if the market breaks below 1939.3 okay uh, it's possibly back to the point of origin which is $1950 before the market surge to the year high at $2048.80 so again by and large the market do come down watch out for some kind of support around $1950 if this level fails to hold then the next level in which I'll be interested to go in and buy again will be a 1,914 to 1,933. So this is actually my ideal price to buy. Okay, we will have to see whether that is the case. Now over in silver, uh, we also see not much of an activity. We basically sideways market traded at a high of $26.09 and has gone down to a slow at $24.49. That about the market since has gone into a sideways pattern. Now while the market, if it goes higher to $25.30, that about does seems to be like a selling opportunity please do not sell this because uh, uh, we have seen this year silver has outperformed gold by a wide margin so if there's going to be any weakness in precious metals a better bet is to sell gold and not to sell silver in fact if the market actually goes up and come back down to 24 dollars or 23 dollars and 70 cents that about that will be a the first time we're going to get a break uh in terms of a market pullback to allow us to buy silver you can see all the way for the market low of somewhere around the $19 plus, we went all the way to 26 without any break at all. So the market has been very, very strong. So this will be the first time if the market ever pulls back to $24 uh, within the range of $23.70 to $24, it is a buying opportunity. Okay. So in dollar itself, we don't see a lot of reaction. Uh, unlike the uh, equity players, people in the currency market a little bit more realistic. Uh, they were not led by the idea that uh, uh, a cut in interest rate is going to be good for currency okay so we can see uh, the dollar has a bit of a movement but not much by the by the end of the day the low so far trade is 100.74 which is not too far away from the low of this year at 100.42 so i i still maintain that this looks like a possibility for a three-way rally to 102 uh 30 to 102 60 levels okay so do watch out for this possibility i'm basically still maintaining a long in dollar uh, uh uh, dollar index. So sim likewise, uh, the other currency pair do not see a uh, drastic move overnight. Uh, sterling is now back into this bracket of prices, which I think is making it very vulnerable to selling in pressure. Their level is 124.90 to 125.20. Okay, the price right now. Uh, this morning high, we have a high of 125.04. So it put it smack in the middle of this bracket here. So what does it mean? It means the market may actually come back down. Nearer support will be 123.45, which is, has been holding up pretty well. And if the market cannot hold at this level, the next level of int, uh, support will be likely at 121.80. Okay, but do watch out. Over in Euro dollar, which is a, a, a surprise because I have always maintained a somewhat, somewhat bearish view on the Euro dollar, but you can see that this week the market went up to a high of 110.95 before it eased back. But by the way, I have been stopped out of my short position because of this spike to 110.95. Currently, I have no position. Uh, we will have to see because so far I've been watching this black color line, which is my support line uh, for this uh, Euro dollar. It has so far been very resilient. There's no sign yes going to break i have maintained that it looks like it is going to break but so far it has proven me otherwise so we will have to watch this again okay over in aussie aussie has a big drop from 0.68 to 0.6590 okay so this is very very close to my medium term target at 0.6565 represented by this green horizontal line here so downside potential is not much so i would rather not take a position in aussie okay dollar yen i still maintain that the the, the rebound from 129.64 uh looks to be over at 135.14 and now the market is getting ready to resume uh its original trend which is coming down from 137 so we will see if the market will go below 133 and then head towards the 129.65 levels okay 
over in dollar Canadian, dollar Canadian has been very, very strong uh, since hitting a bottom at 133. It went up to 136.50, a move of 350 and more. Okay, now it seems the market is, yeah, there's a bit of profit taking, but not very much. Okay, so if by for some reason the market decided to pull back, uh, my area of interest will be 134.35, 134.75, there about. That could be a great area to position long if I'm still bullish on dollar. On the dollar itself so this is an area of uh, interest to me over in the crypto market we have seen some kind of volatility over the last 48 hours now from 27,000 there about market zoom all the way to 30,000 then falls back down to below 27,200 so this is a big move up big giant move to the top big giant move back to uh, back to back to earth uh, all within a span of hours so this is very volatile since then the market has gone back up again this uh, last night we've seen bitcoin flirting with 30,000 to a high of 29,887 and then this morning we see a bit of a deflation okay so whether this is going to signal another rally in the bitcoin market it's hard to say because of this particular move here that actually muddled the waters to the point where it's totally unclear whether it is favorable to the downside or is it favorable to the upside. So right now, uh, just watch. <laughs> I have no recommendation or, uh, or I have any particular view on Bitcoin for the time being. So this is all I have for you for tonight and uh, for today. So I will see you again uh, next Monday. Bye bye. Take care. Have you ever felt that 2020 is a wasted year? For the last few months, we have been told that we need to reinvent ourselves by pivoting whatever we are doing to online. I have found that the last 20 years or so, this trend towards digitalization has actually enabled individuals like me to trade from practically anywhere in the world with just a laptop and an internet connection. My name is Daniel Ang and I've been trading financial markets for the last 35 years. COVID-19 has been very disruptive so far. But I found that the last few months has been my most productive yet. I spent the stay at home period to finally finish writing my book, The Accidental Trader. This goes to show that we have it in all of us to turn adversity into opportunity. Now more than ever, we need new skill set to survive the coming years, if not decades. If I say the coming years will be very challenging, it is an understatement. COVID-19 is a wake up call. There is no time to waste, now is the time. This book is available at all major bookstores and I encourage you to go grab a copy. If this book can be an inspiration to you, it would have achieved my objective. Remember, success is the formula, so is making money. And that's our video for today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit the Rich Dad page Facebook page. Once again, my name is Axel Rose. Thank you for watching.